Hemolytic anemia is defined as anemia due to premature destruction of red blood cells. Red blood cells, also known as erythrocytes, are produced in the bone marrow and then enter circulation to become mature. The mechanism of red blood cell hemolysis can be intravascular, which means destruction of red blood cells within the vasculature, or hemolysis can occur extravascular, which means hemolysis occurring outside the vasculature, typically in the organs such as the spleen and liver, where the reticular endothelial system uh, resides. Hemolysis uh, stimulates the kidneys to produce erythropoietin, a hormone which stimulates erythropoiesis, the production or the formation of red blood cells. Red blood cells are produced from the myeloid progenitor cell line to become reticular sites in the bone marrow. As mentioned, erythropoietin, or EPO, stimulates erythropoiesis, and the release of EPO can be due to decreased level of oxygen uh, to tissues. Erythropoiesis is also stimulated by other hormones, including androgens and thyroid hormone. Reticulocytes are the premature red blood cells, which are still able to synthesize proteins. After about three days, the reticulocytes will enter circulation where they will mature and become erythrocytes, which are anucleated, so no nucleus, uh, cells. The typical lifespan of a red blood cell is approximately 120 days, which is four months. During this time, the red blood cells circulate around the body through the spleen again and again, where they are subjected to remarkable amounts of mechanical stress. Eventually, as they age and or get injured, they normally get cleared up by the body through the reticular endothelial system I mentioned earlier. I want to take a short time to introduce to you a cool program called PDF Element. I'm sure a lot of you guys out there use PDFs for studying. PDF Element is an all-in-one PDF editor from which you can get powerful features to edit, annotate, and convert PDF easily. You just open a PDF file. For example, here is a PDF file of the red blood cell life cycle. If you want to add additional information, you simply get the text box and type away. Change the font, size, and color as you like. For my PDF, it's important to remember here that erythrocytes come from the myeloid progenitor line. PDF Element also allows you to add images easily. It even gives you the option to draw on the PDF file. So here's an image of a blood film, and this here represents the erythrocytes, and the bigger cell is the reticular site, the immature red blood cell. PDF Element is a robust PDF editor, annotator, and converter on your Windows and Mac. It greatly helps to read, take notes, and convert PDF easily. Through this channel, you can save up to 50% off PDF Element by clicking on the banner in the video or on the description box below. I really do recommend this program, especially if you like getting creative with your notes. Let's continue on with the rest of the video. Hemolytic anemia is due to premature destruction of the red blood cells and can be easily grouped into intravascular um, hemolysis, which is hemolysis occurring in the vasculature, and extravascular hemolysis, which is hemolysis occurring via the reticular endothelial system, which is also known as the mononuclear phagocyte system, situated in organs such as the spleen and the liver. The reticular endothelial system houses many monocytes and macrophages. These monocytes and macrophages normally clear up old and damaged red blood cells. However, in hemolytic anemia, the reticular endothelial system typically works uh, in overdrive because they are destroying more red blood cells. Because there is so much red blood cell destruction, you can find some classical laboratory blood changes in hemolytic anemia. As a result of many premature red blood cell destruction, you get increase in lactate dehydrogenase, an enzyme found in red blood cells. One red blood cell contains millions of hemoglobin molecules. When there is a lot of hemoglobin being broken down, such as in hemolytic anemia, you get a lot of globin, which will get recycled. You have a lot of heme, which when further broken down, uh, means you have more iron and unconjugated bilirubin. With hemolytic anemia, you classically get hemoglobin molecules floating around which have not been fully cleared up by the body. Luckily, 
there are these molecules called haptoglobins, which pick up these free hemoglobin molecules and then will actually carry them to the reticular endothelial system to properly remove these hemoglobin molecules. So as a result, when you measure haptoglobin levels, they will be reduced in hemolytic anemia. Again, this is because haptoglobin binds onto free hemoglobin and gets cleared up. In summary, the classic laboratory findings in hemolytic anemia is increased lactate dehydrogenase, increased bilirubin, and decreased haptoglobin, with an increase in the reticular site count because remember, hemolysis stimulates erythropoiesis and therefore reticular site formation production. Now let us talk about the different causes of intravascular hemolysis and extravascular hemolysis, beginning with intravascular hemolysis. A often forgotten cause of hemolysis is mechanical valve hemolysis, which is red blood cell destruction due to sheer stress trauma to the red blood cell from a mechanical valve in the heart. During certain conditions when there is a pro-coagulative state or pro-thrombotic state, such as in microangiopathic hemolysis, red blood cells can get destroyed because as they pass through this clot, their cell membranes can get damaged and then they just burst and die. Examples of microangiopathic hemolysis include thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura, hemolytic uremic syndrome, and disseminated intravascular coagulation. Important to note that when you look at the urine in these patients who have microangiopathic hemolysis, you can find fragmented red blood cells. There are also immune-mediated intravascular hemolysis, such as paroxysmal cold hemoglobinuria or paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria, both of which result in red blood cell destruction through complement activation. Cold immune hemolytic anemia is another immune-mediated intravascular uh, hemolysis, and this is where antibodies recognize antigens on red blood cells at temperatures below normal core body temperatures, and they actually induce the red blood cell destruction. Cold immune hemolytic anemia are typically extravascular hemolysis due to the immunoglobulin M, but there are variants that cause intravascular hemolysis. Another example of intravascular hemolysis can be seen when giving IV fluids. This is osmotic lysis following infusion of hypotonic solutions. When giving someone a hypotonic solution, this means water will tend to move somewhere with more solutes which is the red blood cells in this case. This causes the red blood cells to take in water. They will swell up and burst, leading to intravascular hemolysis. Another important cause of hemolysis is acute transfusion reactions. Each person has a particular type of red blood cell characterized by an antigen on their surface. This means that we can either be type A, type B, type AB, and type O. If a type B recipient, which typically have type A antibodies, receive blood from a type A donor, the antibodies from the recipient will of course attack the red blood cells, causing hemolysis because the donor and recipient's blood are not compatible. Important to remember that in intravascular hemolysis, you see hemosiderin urine, whereas in extravascular hemolysis, you do not see hemosiderin urine. Hemosiderin urine is really brown urine, typically because of iron from the heme. It is usually seen three to four days after the onset of hemolytic conditions. Now for causes of extravascular hemolysis, which can be further divided into extracorpuscular causes, and this is due to problems not within the red blood cell itself, or problems inside the red blood cells, such as the enzymes, the morphology. This is intracorpuscular, and intracorpuscular hemolysis is usually congenital. Regardless if it is intracorpuscular or extracorpuscular problems, the red blood cell is abnormal and will be cleared from the circulation via the reticuloendothelial system, 
where all the monocytes and the macrophages are waiting. This is what defines extravascular hemolysis. Examples of extracorpuscular causes include warm autoimmune hemolytic anemia. This is where antibodies attack red blood cell membranes when there is an increase in body temperature. The antibody binds onto the cell membrane of red blood cells, bringing them to phagocytes, promoting its clearance. Hypersplenism is another cause of hemolytic anemia. This is usually due to sequestration of the cells in the area and an increase in the activity of the monocytes and macrophages as well. Infections of red blood cells such as in malaria and bartonellosis are important causes of extravascular hemolysis. These parasites invade red blood cells and because they are now abnormal cells, they are typically cleared from the body via the reticular endothelial system. Intracorpuscular causes of hemolysis include hemoglobinopathies, problems in the hemoglobin molecule, its structure basically. Remember, each red blood cell contains millions of hemoglobin molecules. The structure of the hemoglobin is important for it to function properly in order for it to carry oxygen around the body. Hemoglobinopathies are problems with the hemoglobin, such as in sickle cell anemia and thalassemia. As a result, these red blood cells are destroyed much quicker. Cell membrane defects such as in hereditary spherocytosis, hereditary elliptocytosis, and hereditary stomatocytosis are also destroyed by the reticular endothelial system because the, the cell membrane, the structure, the morphology of the red blood cells are abnormal and they're unable to pass through the reticular endothelium successfully during its uh, daily circulation. Finally, enzyme deficiencies such as in G6P deficiency is a cause of intracorpuscular hemolytic anemia. Why is this? Well, in red blood cells, anaerobic glycolysis is the main pathway to produce energy uh, in the form of ATP. During its process, free radicals are made. G6P is an important enzyme which helps contribute to reducing free radical formation, keeping the cell healthy. Without G6P, you have free radicals building up, causing damage to the cells, and so these cells will be cleared up by the reticular endothelial system a lot faster. In summary, hemolytic anemia can be divided into intravascular causes and extravascular hemolysis. Extravascular hemolysis can be further divided into extracorpuscular, 